I am sharing with you how to reduce anxiety and overwhelm, in particular with a great morning and evening routine. This is my exact morning and evening routine. Just to give you a little bit of context, I have been stressed out and overwhelmed for most of my adult life. And because of this, I struggled to get healthy. Because stress and overwhelm, what that did to me was I stayed up late. I was scrolling too much on my phone. I was eating too much. I was drinking too much. I was missing workouts. And I was doing all these things because I was stressed out and overwhelmed. Not because my, I, I didn't want to or my intentions weren't good. I really wanted to be healthy. However, it is so difficult to be healthy when you're stressed out and overwhelmed because stress and overwhelm lead to inaction. And when you're stressed out and overwhelmed, it's really hard to think straight. I became really like just jumping from one thing to the next, just very, um, what's the word? Like running around reacting to everything. And I, I, I found it difficult to operate from a cool and calm place because I was so stressed out and overwhelmed. And because I was so anxious all the time, I turned to food for comfort. I wanted to unwind with alcohol at the weekend. I didn't want to do my workouts because when I get stressed out, I, I used to feel like frozen into inaction. So when you have all these things combined that are coming from stress and overwhelm, all that leads to, all that led to for me was low confidence, tight clothes because I was eating and drinking too much, which made me feel worse when I looked in the mirror and had a bad negative effect on my confidence. Because I was eating and drinking too much and missing workouts, my negative inner critic got louder. Like, here you go again. You're always back to square one. Why can't you even get healthy? I was puffy, bloated, overweight, no energy, sluggish all the time. And there wasn't much fun and laughter in my day to day. And I can literally put most of this on the fact that I was stressed out and overwhelmed. And let's face it, for most of us women in our 40s and 50s and 60s and beyond, we are busy. We do get stressed out and overwhelmed. There's so many hormonal changes going on with perimenopause and menopause and aging parents and younger children. And there's so much stuff. How can you not be stressed out and overwhelmed? Yet for the majority of us, when we think of our health, we're focused on the fitness and the food. Am I eating right? And am I getting my workouts in? However, it's really, really difficult to get your workouts and your nutrition good if you're stressed out and overwhelmed. So if you're listening to this now and you're stressed out and overwhelmed and you're focused on eating well and it's not working out for you and you're missing workouts, remember that most of us, it's the, they're just symptoms. Missing workouts and eating badly are symptoms of a bigger problem. And if you've got a bigger problem like stress and overwhelm and you tackle that, you're going to make healthy habits a whole lot easier for yourself to implement. So if you're listening to this now and you're stressed out and overwhelmed and you're pulling your hair out wondering why you can't get fit and healthy, start there. And I'm going to share with you in this now, uh, one, two, three, four, four tips to help reduce the stress and overwhelm in your day to day. Um, and I'm going to start with number one, and that is create a plan for the week. Literally on a Friday, I will sit down and I will plan for the week ahead. And I will say, okay, Jessica, what do I have next week on? And I will put I'll open up my calendar. I use Asana, which is free and it's a project planner and it's really, really good. And I highly recommend it. That's ASANA.com. Um, and I will put my stuff on it first. So the things that I want to do, like my workouts, I'll do three workouts a week. My hobbies, I have one or two hobbies a week. Like I like to do a little bit of golf and a few different things and I'll put those on. Um, I love to read books. I love to go for coffee and I love to meet up with a couple of friends throughout the week. So I'll dot all those in my calendars and they'll be put on my calendar for the week ahead as my non-negotiables. They don't get moved unless they absolutely have to. And then the second thing that goes on my calendar is the kids stuff, like their football or their music lessons or taekwondo, whatever it is for Arthur and Emily, they go on my calendar next. Then the next thing that will go on my calendar um, are, is my work. And not just like I work from this time to this time, 
but like what I'm working on, what I have to work on, what I want to work on, what needs to get done, what are the priorities for next week? And that all goes on my calendar, Monday to Friday. Um, I put, make sure that there's boundaries around work so that I continue to really enjoy it and love what I do. So I make sure that on that calendar, I have a set time that I start and a set time that I finish. And those times can change every day. However, I do write it down on my calendar when the laptop closes and when I'm finished work. I need boundaries around work or else it'll just spill into every single minute of the day I'm awake, I, 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 from the moment I'm awake to the time I go asleep. And that's not good. I'm really getting good at all parts of me, nurturing all parts of me. And I hope you do too. So I factor in fun as well. Or, and if I'm going on a date night with Joe, every single thing goes on the calendar for the week including the food shop. I do a food shop on a Thursday in the evening time once a week and I aim to only go into the shops once a week or as little as possible as I can. So number one to reduce anxiety and overwhelm is to create a plan for the week ahead. Now number two what I love to do is I love to create a plan for each day the night before not just before I go to bed, because I like to relax on the couch before I'm in bed, but at some point, just before I finish work, for the next day, I write out a plan. So I check what day it is, first of all, and I'm like, okay, Jessica, you had a great day in work today. What's the plan for tomorrow? And I just use my Mishnok journal, which I love, and I just kind of sketch it out. I don't use the Sana for this, I'm just sketching. And I write out, okay, so what day is it tomorrow? Is it a workout day? Okay, and if it's a workout day, that means that I'm going to get my clothes ready and my bag ready and everything that I need for my workout for the next day, I will get ready. I do my workouts in the studio, so um, I pack a bag and bring it in, in to work with me. I get my clothes ready. Then I ask myself, what, what, what big projects are going on at work and what really needs my attention in work for the next day? And I write out my top three intentions for the next day. And just like that analogy of the jar and the pebbles and the rocks, if you put all the little pebbles into the jar first, you're never gonna fit the rocks in. So the rocks have to go in first, your big three projects, and then all the little pebbles can go in after that. For example, you don't wanna spend your day sending out emails and replying to emails because you're not gonna be able to move the needle with the important stuff. So important stuff first and then putting the rest of the stuff around that. So I make sure my work is sorted. I make sure before I leave my desk for the next day, I know the time I'm starting work, the time I'm finishing work, and my top three projects for the day. Also, if it's a workout day, I make sure that I know the time that I'm going to be working out. And I stick to that very seriously because a workout that gets kicked down the day all day long is a workout that does not get done. Then I sort out the kids. Who's with them? Who's minding them? Am I with them? What time is that? And I just make sure it's rock solid. I don't like little things to throw me um, because it makes me feel really bad and anxiety can bubble up. So I make sure I know what they're at, what they're doing, um, and that me and Joe are, we, we, we know what the story is. Um, also, me and Joe make sure that we can always fit our workouts in. So if he's out all day, I make sure he's able to get his workout in um, and I've got the kids and, and vice versa. Um, and, I, and, I, and I write it out. So I, when I'm heading home after work or when I'm working from home and I'm finishing up for the day, I know my plan for the next day. Now, the third tip is to create a really great bedtime routine. And my bedtime routine goes like this. I have something really good lined up to watch. I don't want to spend the nighttime scrolling, looking around Netflix. Now, this sounds like a silly thing. However, it really helps me feel calm and it makes me feel like okay, well, I've organized and planned all day long and I, I, it's really important to me that I'm able to unwind and relax and not spend my time scrolling around Netflix. So I have something good lined up. I'm always asking people for recommendations. I have my plan for the day ahead before I sit down on the couch. I sit down on the couch with a hot chocolate and I watch my favorite thing on Netflix or whatever it is, like it might be an hour of my show plus 10 minutes. I am going up those stairs to bed at 10 40 p.m. latest 10 50 p.m. I brush my teeth my face is already washed before the kids have gone to bed because I want to maximize as much time on the couch as I can and I go and I get into bed after my teeth are brushed and I open up my book always a fiction book and I read until I'm tired but never more than 15 minutes it is mostly lights out by five past ten past eleven latest 
that's the bedtime routine. I'm up the next day regardless of how I slept. So sometimes I'll sleep really bad and sometimes I'll sleep really well. My schedule does not change whatsoever. And I found that when I sleep in and I hit the snooze button and I don't get up when I said I was gonna get up because I have slept badly the night before, I feel really anxious and stressed out and I'm chasing my tail all day long. So I would prefer to just get up at the time that I committed to and that's what I do. Tip number four is my morning routine. I get up at 6.30 a.m. and I get changed as quick as I can and I walk down the stairs. Now, if it's a workout day, I don't have a shower. If it is a workout, if it's not a workout day, I have showered the night before and I go into the bathroom, I get changed. I'm either getting changed into my workout gear or I'm getting changed into my normal clothes, do my face and my hair, brush my teeth, go downstairs, go into our den and I meditate for 10 minutes or I sit in silence for 10 minutes. I set the alarm clock, I close my eyes on the chair and I sit in that struggle. I don't want to be there. I'm thinking of a million things that I have to do when I sit down. However, I sit in that struggle. The 10 minutes are up, the alarm goes off, I get the dog leads, I go and get the dogs and I'm out the door and I go for a 10 minute walk in the natural light, in the fresh air. And I say things like, I am safe, I'm loved, I'm enough. And I look all around me and I take in nature and I look up at the birds and I look around at the trees and I think, I'm part of nature. This is me. This is who I am, part of the circle of life. And I find it really, really grounding. And I watch the dogs sniff and I let them sniff and I walk really slow and I look around me. And anytime I think about work or I start to ruminate on something, I bring my mind back to the present moment. I notice my thoughts like they used to be up until really recently, really negative. Like my thoughts used to try and bring me down and bring me away from the really lovely walk. My thoughts would say things like, what about the thing you've got to do later on today? Or what about that thing yesterday that didn't go as well as planned in work? And I used to go down that road with my thoughts and be like, oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just get into this ball of anxiety for the day. Whereas now I go, wow, look at that. Your thoughts are constantly trying to bring you down. Can you believe that? Wow. And here I am in the most beautiful countryside in Renville, in Galway, so at peace with the dogs here. And my thoughts are trying to bring me back or bring me forward and worrying. So now I catch them and I say, God, that's so silly. And I say this affirmation, which I love so much. I'm safe. I'm loved and I'm enough because I've noticed my anxiety and stress come a lot from not feeling safe. So the more I remind myself that I'm safe, the better I feel. I'm loved. I need to remind myself that I am loved and I don't need to seek love. I am loved and I'm enough helps me because most of my worries with work, either like ruminating on the past or worrying in the future, I, I, I can always trace it back to me thinking I'm not enough or I'm not doing enough or I'm not good enough. So I'm safe, I'm loved, I'm enough, just really hits those three points and reduces stress and anxiety a lot when I'm out on my walk. So by the time I get out on my walk, I am feeling good and ready for the day. Then I come home, I go straight to the coffee machine, my favorite part. I make myself a cup of coffee and I sit out in the garden. If it's raining, I just grab an umbrella and I sit under the umbrella and I sit there and then Joe comes and joins me and we have a little chat and then we start our day. And it's wonderful and I must say, I've only started this routine a few months ago and it is absolutely reprogramming and changing the wiring in my brain. I have gone from starting the day really overwhelmed and anxious to genuinely feeling calm and in control and really set for the day. Now there's a few other things, other tips that I want to give you outside of the tips that I just did. So they're my main five things that I do. However, I want to just talk to you about a couple of things first of all. So number one, I have to follow a plan. That's what keeps me feeling calm. However, if it all goes to pot, 
I genuinely go with that plan now and that helps me feel calm. What I used to do was get really stressed out that things weren't going to plan. Like if Arthur or Emily were sick from school or if the car broke down, I genuinely now just drop everything. <laughs> I, I, I used to get myself into all sorts of anxiety, stress, trouble and things would go worse because I would still try to stick to the plan when everything had gone to hell. So like if Arthur and Emily were sick off school, I would still try and follow religiously everything that I had set out to do. Whereas now I'm like, you know what? This isn't going my way at all. I'm actually going to just scrap this, not throw out the day, just totally pivot and not just try to shoehorn what I would have done normally into this different day. The second thing that I want to say to you is that water, sleep, workouts, downtime and fun, are crucial to reducing stress and anxiety. Now, this isn't an episode on working out, which I talk about a lot. I just want to remind you that creating routines are really great with the basics, the foundations. Water, two liters every day, fresh air, workouts, movement is life. You want to be working out three times a week along with walking working out, building lean muscle. You know the story. I say it every, every episode, building that bone density, letting that serotonin, uh, the, the endorphin hit coming out when you do your workouts, which is what happens when you exercise. Factoring in downtime and fun, no matter how tough life is or how busy you are or how tough work is, factoring in that downtime and fun time is really, really important for you to reduce your stress and anxiety. There is more to you than just one thing. You are more than work. You are more than a wife. You are more than a mother. There's so many different elements to you to nurture. And the lovely thing about developing all the parts of you is that when one thing isn't going well, you have all the other things. So let's say, for example, you're loving exercise and you're really enjoying it, but you get injured and you can't work out. You have all these other things built in like laughter and fun and meditation and fresh air. So you're never just relying on this one thing for you to feel good, which is, which is not a great way. Uh, it's risky. That's why I developed PAMS with my clients because there's just all these different action steps we can always be doing. So if we're not feeling consistent with the workouts or we're struggling there, well, we're still getting in fresh air and we're focusing our, on our nutrition. Or when your nutrition is, you're really struggling with your nutrition, you're focusing on your workouts and reducing stress. Um, another thing that I want to um, encourage you to do is when you have a lot of stress and overwhelm, it's a really good idea to journal why, or just to journal just a journal. I carry my Mishnok journal with me everywhere I go and I'm always writing in it about everything and it helps me feel grounded and it helps me process the thoughts and feelings that are going on in my head and I really recommend that you just keep one in your handbag and you do that too. Another tip that I have for you is to really question your thoughts for many years, I thought my thoughts were facts and I used to kind of get quite scared by my thoughts like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm feeling that way or oh my God, I can't believe I think that. I wasn't thinking it, they're just thoughts. Your thoughts aren't what you think. They're not your beliefs. They're not you actively thinking that. They're just thoughts and you have thousands of them every single day and they're just randomly created and they're also just created by all these things. Um, and we don't control the thoughts. How, so it's really important that you know that you can question them and disagree with them and reset yourself anytime you need to. And I am really getting serious about this now. And I find it really amazing. And somebody gifted me, um, Rena, thank you so much, um, the book, Un Untethered Soul. And it's, it explains it so well in terms of like, your thoughts and yourself. And, and the self, yourself is... Is, the, is you, it's the person hearing the thoughts, not the thoughts. Your thoughts are your thoughts and then yourself is the person observing those thoughts. And it's really great once you separate it out like that because you know then that there, there's you and then there's the thoughts you're having and you is the person that's observing those thoughts. So if your thoughts are like, you're so bad at this, you're so fat, you did this, you can really go, hang on a second. 
I don't actually agree with that. I'm actually doing a great job and I love my body and I accept all of myself. And, and you, can, you can speak back, you can disagree and over time it works. You reset yourself. You don't have a negative thought and then launch into a negative day, which is what I did for years. I just walked around with a constant pit in the bottom of my stomach feeling bad all the time. I used to listen to my negative inner critic. If my negative inner critic had a thought and told me, God, you're so ugly and you're so fat, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'm so ugly and I'm so fat. Whereas you could say, hang on a second, where did that come from? And I'm certainly not gonna listen to that. And you can do it with every thought you have. So be the guard at the door and hear those thoughts and observe them and know that they are in many circumstances controlling your actions. Because if you let your thoughts be facts and you become controlled by them, if you, for example, if you're telling yourself, if, you're, if you believe your thoughts and it says you're not good enough, you're so bad at what you do, that's going to have an impact on your actions in work. Like if I listened to the way I used to, Jessica, you're so bad at what you do. Jessica, you'll never be good at this. I'm going to put up a, a, a really crappy video because I'm going to be so self-conscious. I'm not going to be fully myself and fully engaged in, in this episode that I am here with you now because I'm going to be overthinking it and thinking that I'm just not good enough and what I'm saying is not good enough. So be careful with your thoughts. They have an impact on your behavior and on your actions. And I encourage you to observe them talk back to them and let your authentic self shine through and build your confidence up. And last tip that I have for you about reducing stress and overwhelm is a lot of my stress and overwhelm has come from feeling fearful, not feeling safe. So I always like to ask myself now when I'm spending my day or I'm going through my day, am I safe? Am I safe right now? See, I used to presume that I wasn't, so I would walk around just all day feeling fearful and unsafe. Now I actually ask myself and I'm like, oh, hang on, I'm safe. The kids are safe, I'm safe, Joe's safe. Oh, actually, we're all good. And I find it really relaxing again. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want you to know one thing. If you're struggling to be healthy and you're stressed out and you're overwhelmed, you may always struggle to get healthy if you don't tackle the stress and overwhelm. If you tackle the stress and overwhelm, if you reduce your stress and overwhelm, you're going to find it so much easier to implement your healthy habits. I promise you that. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. If you need my help, go to jessicacook.ie, jessicacook.ie. Thank you so, so much for listening. I hope you enjoy this episode. If you do, I would love for you to share it with a friend or just comment and let me know your thoughts on this episode. Have a lovely day and thanks again.